Okay, so I'm gonna install every everything um, everything through PowerShell. We're gonna right click and say Import Server Manager. Hit Enter. And one of the features is the. Um, now remember, you can do all this through here um, by clicking on the Server Manager and looking at the roles and looking at the features and so on and so forth. Um, these are all the prerequisites that were installed. Uh, and one of the features you get to install is the network load balancing here. Um, and you can certainly do that through here. Um, I just prefer PowerShell because it's so much faster. Okay, so we have that. We're going to hit enter. Now we're going to let it do its thing. Alright, so it appears to be set up and um, success succeeded. Perfect. Now what we need to do is go to the other server and run these steps. We'll go through the same steps minus the uh, Active Directory schema preparation um, and the uh, preparing domain. We're not going to run those commands but if you remember the very first commands which is prepares the features um, and then running these commands we're going to do that on the other server to get it ready too. Uh, which I'm not going to go through that process because you, you know if we went through it once already. So um, as I as I resume this, um, I would have already pre-positioned all these commands on the other server also. That was just to let let you guys know this. You need to do this on the other server also. We're going to click on Start, Network Load Balancer, Cluster, New. Type in the name of the server. We found it. We're going to choose. Um, you need to have two interfaces, so we're going to choose the secondary interface. Hit next. We're going to leave the um, the defaults. Hit next. Um, we're going to click on add. We're going to specify the IP that we we want to assign this cluster. Um, so 10.0.1. We'll go with 80. Click OK. We hit next. We're gonna give it name. Exchange array dot how I think dot local. Believe in default. We're gonna hit next. Here, for your organization, you may want to tighten the security up a little bit and change the ports. In our environment, this is you know, this is these are tutorials, so I'm just gonna leave the defaults. I'm gonna hit finish. And it's going to go through and um, set up the array. Um, I'm set up the uh, a cluster on that interface. And as soon as it's done, you'll see this turn green. Okay, so um, I had to reboot the machine. Um, earlier, if you remember, there was an exclamation point here. That's because it wasn't configured. Um, there was an error message basically what happens is if you are in a virtual environment especially like Hyper-V there's an issue with network load balancing so what you need to do is within the Hyper-V you have to right click on the uh, on, on the um, uh, the guest machine whatever whichever guest machines that you have the load balancing on go into the settings of that uh, guest and enable uh, for that interface you have to enable the um, static Mac and uh, enable spoofing Mac spoofing let me show you so this is my host machine um, you have to right click on the exchange servers only on the ones that, that has the um, network load balancer 
uh, role installed or feature installed. So it'd be the, f the first two. You right click it, you go into settings, you choose the the interface. Um, then you have because by by default they're set to dynamic. You have to choose static, leave the default, and then it'll pick up the Mac. And then you get check mark enable spoofing of the Mac addresses. Apply it, okay, and then start up the Hyper V. Um, that's a known issue. They have not apparently they have not fixed it in a while. Um, so if you're going to be doing this in a virtual environment, you have to make sure you do this. Um, so all right, carrying on. So oh, now that this is green and it's ready to go, we're gonna right we're gonna right click the array and say add to cluster. We're gonna type in the name of the server. And choose the defaults. Then again, like I said, the ports you can you would have to change them, but our own purposes will leave them click finish it's going to go through a spending process and then soon you will see both of these green and we'll have the array configured um, so the next step after this is we need to create a uh, there we go so as you can see our network load balancer is ready to go the host configuration information for hosts in this cluster Exchange array down how I think that local and that's the IP. So we're ready to go. We can use this IP. So now what we need to do is create this entry in DNS. So we'll proceed to um, we'll proceed to the uh, domain controller to create that to make those changes. Okay, so now we are on the Active Directory within DNS and we're going to create right click and we're going to create a new record and we're going to call this EXCHARRAY and the IP address was 80 and we need to create a PTR record the reverse lookup for it all right so we click on add host oh okay well that's because I haven't created the backup so um, that's not a big deal I'll go ahead and create that later um, well here let's do it now for your benefit okay I'm manually creating it only because earlier didn't create it. Um, so. Okay, so now we're good. Um, so we've created this DNS entry and the reverse lookup for it. Okay, so now we're going to jump back to the exchange server and install cache role and the uh, hub transport role. Okay, so now what we need to do is come here and um, start up our installation of exchange. It's going to go through and unzip the files, put them in temporary directory so it can start the installation. And if you remember, we have already done the prerequisites and prepared our schema and prepared the domain and and so on and so forth. So. And it's not gonna. It shouldn't ask for uh, us for the organization name because we've already specified that in the prerequisite stage. We're gonna hit accept. We're gonna hit next. Hit no. We're gonna choose the custom install only because we're installing the client access and the um, hub transport roles. Um, 
and then we're gonna hit next we're gonna choose the client access hub transport and we're gonna browse to the um, <laughs> the B directory uh, automatically install Windows Server own features required for Exchange Server that's in case we miss something you know let it do it it's a pretty cool function um, hit next so if this is going to be internet facing so meaning if you want people to come to mail dot you know whatever mail dot um, how I think dot com um, which there is no such domain because there isn't but mail dot um, so for example so we'll do this we'll do mail dot that's my consulting firm so um, zamatechnologies.com that's going to be the internet facing so we'll go ahead and uh, input that we'll hit next no I don't want to join hit next and it's going to go through and check the prerequisites one more time just to make sure everything's okay and it's going to say oh, okay well are the hub transport prerequisites and the CAS um, prerequisites good if so the next stage it'll go ahead and do the installation all right so we'll go ahead everything looks good we'll go ahead and install and this should go right through without any issues whatsoever Okay, so it looks like everything installed. Good, no errors. And we'll go ahead and click finish. Yeah, whatever. It's going to ask for a reboot. That's fine. And we're going to click here. Let it refresh itself. And then will have a at least part of an exchange server that's up and running so and so now we have our exchange server so we'll do the we'll I'll go ahead and duplicate this on the other server um, exact same process so I don't think I need to record that but uh, and then once we're done with that um, for the mailbox installation on the other two servers um, and then the subsequent configuration of it you know uh, we'll go ahead and uh, do those so let's go ahead and uh, um, move on to the mailbox uh, installation